Hello, I'm Roberta Dwyer. I'm an extension veterinarian at the Gluck Equine Research Center at the University of Kentucky. And this segment, we're going to be focusing on the bony anatomy of the front limb of the horse. Their anatomy and our anatomy of our arm versus their front limb is extremely similar. Horses have a shoulder blade, just like we do. The one absence in the horse skeleton versus the human skeleton is they don't have a collarbone. They don't have any bony attachment of the front limb to the rest of their body. The way this limb stays attached to the horse's body is through muscles, tendons, ligaments, and other connective tissue. So while we have a collarbone, which is a bony attachment of our arm to our body, the horse is all connective tissue. So here's a scapula, then we go down to the humerus. And if you consider this joint in the human, we can do a lot of different types of rotations and movement with that particular joint. How many times have you ever seen a horse do this with the front leg? That doesn't happen on a normal animal. That's because anatomically this joint is meant to go forward for locomotion, to move the front leg back, and to go minimally side to side. So for the dressage horses that are doing half passes, you know, those are the types of movements that this joint is actually doing. Here's the humerus. We have an elbow, horses have an elbow. Our elbow and the horse's elbow is attached to, is part of the bone called the ulna. And the ulna in the horse, obviously it starts out here at the elbow, but you can see it goes down to a very vestigial piece of the bone that's actually fused to the radius. We have a distinct ulna and radius, two separate bones. These are fused in the horse, a little bit different. So that's the forearm. The next set of bones is the equivalent to our wrist, although people will call this the knee, and these are carpal bones. There's two layers of carpal bones on the horse, and I always teach it from the medial or the inside of the animal going to the outside of the animal. The top row of carpal bones starts with a radial carpal bone, then the next bone here, which is right almost on midline, is the intermediate carpal bone, the ulnar carpal bone, which is on the lateral side, and the accessory carpal bone here. The next layer down also starts on the inside with the second carpal bone, the third carpal bone, and the fourth carpal bone. If we move down, we've got to our wrist. Now we go to the bones, of, long bones of the hand. In horses, everybody knows that this is the cannon bone, and that is the third metacarpal bone. Here on the inside is a nice splint bone, which we call the second metacarpal bone. The third metacarpal bone is the cannon, and on the lateral side is the fourth metacarpal bone. Now that's the equivalent of two, three, and four on the human hand. And you might say, where did one and five go? Over evolution, those particular bones um, disappeared. They, they've evolved now to where you've got splint bones and the main a huge weight-bearing bone and very dense bone of the cannon bone. Again, going south, we have two sesamoid bones, the medial and the lateral sesamoid bone. And what we generally know is the long pastern bone, the short pastern bone, and the coffin bone are actually the first, second, and third metacarpal bones in the horse. And you might say, isn't that enough? But there's one bone that we're missing that's very hard to get a picture of when you've got an entire skeleton like this, and that's the navicular bone, which is just behind uh, the coffin bone. And it's a slab-like bone. If you've heard of navicular disease, that is where this bone is, is within the hoof and can cause some problems on, with horses. So navicular disease, a lot of lamenesses with horses start in the hoof. Another area where they can have um, lameness, especially in young horses and athletes that are doing a lot of exercise and a lot of work, 
is with this metacarpal bone, there's a ligament that attaches it to the main cannon bone, and sometimes that ligament gets inflamed, sometimes there are, there's a partial or complete fracture of this particular bone, and that's commonly known as splints. So if you ever have a lameness in your horse and an abnormal swelling, heat in a joint or anywhere around the, the lower leg of an animal, that's the time to call your veterinarian. If you'd like to have more information on the anatomy of the horse's leg and other lamenesses, you can go to uh, thehorse.com, you can contact your veterinarian, and obviously use uh, the resources that you have at your local public library. Mm -hmm.